Hello, my name is Inda Birdie on behalf of the Keyhole Heart Clinic. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to talk to you about mitral valve disease. The mitral valve, as you may already know, is a very important valve in the heart. It's made up of two leaflets that open and close and allow the blood to come from the lungs, through the valve and into the big chamber of the heart called the left ventricle so that this ventricle then can contract and pump the blood around your body. It's very important that this valve opens properly and then closes and seals properly to ensure that the blood goes through the heart in one way and no other way. Now one of the commonest complications of disease within the heart valve, the mitral valve, that we see in the United Kingdom is mitral valve regurgitation. Regurgitation is a big fancy word for leaking and that's all it really means. Now let me explain to you what a leaky mitral valve means. If you imagine the mitral valve opens and closes, opens and closes, opens and closes like this, blood coming from the lungs, through the valve, to the heart and around the body. When the valve leaks, it's because either the leaflets aren't meeting properly and they've been separated, and this is usually because the ring upon which the valve sits has enlarged, so the leaflets are separated. And you can see in this particular scenario, whenever this ventricle contracts, blood goes back towards the lungs. And I'll come back to why that's important in a moment. The other reason why the valve might leak is because the strings that attach the valve to the inside of your ventricle rupture. And this is also a very common degenerative condition that we see in heart valves in this country. And you can imagine what happens then. The doors, instead of just opening one way, open the wrong way. And it can be either one door or both doors. Now, depending upon the nature of the leak, we can often repair that heart valve. And it's important that we know about these conditions in the heart because by leaving them alone, we know that over time, damage occurs. The first thing that happens is the heart itself starts to swell because with each extra beat, more blood comes through the heart. And the only way that the heart can respond to that is to enlarge. And the other problem, of course, as you might imagine and guess at this point in time, is that if the, if the blood leaks backwards, it puts pressure on the lungs and the lung blood pressure goes up and that over time becomes irreversible. Now, one of the other complications of mitral valve regurgitation, particularly when it's very severe, is that the chamber that's downstream from that leaking valve enlarges too. And that enlargement starts to create an irritation within the heart. Atrial fibrillation is something that you may have heard of. Now, this is not a good condition for the heart to have at all. And it starts off as an paroxysmal, on and off type palpitation symptom that patients might suffer, and then ultimately it becomes permanent. And the problem is that once it becomes permanent, it reduces the cardiac efficiency by 30%. Now that's a huge amount of inefficiency that we mustn't allow to happen to anybody's hearts in the modern era. Now fortunately, as I said previously, we can repair this valve more often than not, but the real importance of this problem is to detect it. And this is why it's very, very important when doctors, general practitioners, or other doctors within the hospital communities pick up heart murmurs, we investigate them with an echocardiogram. And this is something you're gonna hear more about in other videos that you'll find on the site. And an echocardiogram is a very painless investigation. It's like a pregnant scan of the heart, a little ultrasound scanner that we can put on the heart to look at the valves. And the way you listen to them and actually see them by listening to them in some kind of transferred image on a screen. And I hope to show you some of those fairly shortly. Simple tests that can pick up a very important problem that if treated early can prevent many of the complications associated with a leaking heart valve. Now, what are the treatments of a leaking heart valve? Once we realize that your mitral valve is leaking severely, whether or not you have symptoms, we need to do something about it. Now, symptoms actually make life a lot easier. If you're breathless with this or you're developing palpitations, then clearly having surgery will improve that as well as improve your long-term outlook by repairing, or perhaps in unusual circumstances, having to replace the heart valve. But even in the absence of those symptoms, you can see that we want to really prevent your heart from swelling up. We want to prevent the heart from developing new uh, and abnormal heart rhythms that can reduce its efficiency, and also to prevent the lung blood pressure from rising as a result of this chronic leak that will occur if we don't pick this up. Now, Depending upon the type of leak you have, if we're able to repair your heart valve, we can pretty much put you back on your normal life curve. And that's the beauty of mitral valve repair. It has a lower risk than mitral valve replacement and has a better long-term outcome than mitral valve replacement. So your surgeon should always try and repair your heart valve uh, 
uh, you know, as often as possible because of that uh, link with your long-term outcome. And indeed, a mitral valve repair is more durable than having a pig's valve, which is one of the replacement scenarios that we can sometimes offer patients. Now, patients also don't like to be on warfarin, and the other replacement protocol that we have uh, in, that, in these scenarios is a, is a mechanical valve. Uh, and I think that these days, both clinicians and patients really would like to avoid mechanical valves if at all possible. So in many different ways, mitral valve repair plays the most significant role in treating this condition. But the key is to pick it up early and to know exactly what is happening with the valve in order that we can repair it. Now, one other thing that we offer at the Keyhole Heart Clinic, and I think it's very, very important, is, is, is a way of doing this through a keyhole incision. And if you look elsewhere on the site, you'll see me talking about keyhole mitral valve surgery and the benefits of it. Now, traditionally, all heart operations are done through the breastbone. And that's a great incision. It, it's a wonderful operation, and many heart surgeons do surgery through this incision very effectively and very well, and people recover very well from it. Some surgeons, like uh, the teams that we have at the Keyhole Heart Clinic, perform this operation through a small cut in the side. And the beauty of this is it's an incision that is smaller, cosmetically more appealing, but more important than that, as far as I'm concerned as a doctor, it has real value because this cut heals in 12 days instead of 12 weeks. And the reason is very simple. This is between the ribs and this is through the bone. And we all know that the bone takes a long time when it's divided, just like any broken bone, to heal. It has to calcify, it has to knit, and that does take 12 weeks. So avoiding heavy lifting, getting back to normal activities can be a restriction for you. One of the other big benefits of having the keyhole incision is that we can also operate on people much earlier in their problems with the mitral valve and try and prevent some of these problems that might happen if we leave that valve leaking for too long and also then preserve uh, those patients in later life, perhaps through the breastbone, where as you get older, this operation remains safer than having to go through the breastbone again at a later date. So there are many real clinical benefits to keyhole heart surgery, but I think perhaps the most important take-home message today that I'd like you to take is that the mitral valve is a very important valve. If it leaks, particularly if it leaks severely, something needs to be done about it. There's a very simple test that we can do to look for it, and actually you don't need to be afraid because of the outcome of the treatment strategies that we have in place are excellent. <laughs>